Hi, I'm Patricia Gio. After our exploration of beliefs in Japan in the preceding unit, let's head for China and learn the secrets of the power of Chinese hybrids. From time immemorial, the concept of mutation has been at the heart of Chinese thought. It is the basis of cosmogony and of the interpretation of nature. In the universe, everything is subject to change, to mutate, as long as harmony can perpetuate. Let's analyze the traditional Chinese characters for yin and yang, whose theory remains the alternation of the 10,000 beings that make up the world. Yin, on this side of the hills, now they are clouds. Yang, on that side of the hills, now the sun is shining. The movement of the cosmic and human life is described in the Yi Jing, the Book of Changes, formed from 64 hexagrams, designed after divination. Through divination, the shaman asks the ancestors not to get something or for protection. Instead, he asks the ancestors for the future. For, ex for example, will it rain soon? Will we win the war? Will the king have a son? He would throw the stems of yarrow and the shape of the stems after falling corresponds to a hexagram. And each hexagram is associated with a cabalistic comment that needs to be interpreted. Note that the oldest Chinese characters for mutation is Yi. This pictogram represents a large lizard. It is found in the word Yi Jing. This choice is not surprising. In nature, some animals have a capacity to mold. For example, cicadas, butterflies, silkworms, amphibians. The Chinese have believed since ancient times that what has a capacity to mold can certainly attain immortality. Death may be indefinitely postponed because we can live again in another form, in another existence. So, the animal hybrid representation fits perfectly into this perspective of eternal survival. In the tombs of the Neolithic Hongshan culture, a first kind of hybrid is discovered. It's the pig dragon, the Zhulong. For the first time, the pea circle, which archaeologists think is representing the universe and the earth, is broken creating a beginning, a jaw-like pig snout, and an end, a kind of spine. For the first time, the hybrid can move, it is no more wound onto itself. It becomes so powerful. Most of these objects are in jade, a very hard stone to work, symbolizing continuity. Placed in tombs, the jade pig dragon is considered to protect the body against Putrefaction. This power of mutation and self-existence of the hybrid created in this way is naturally coupled with an apotropaic function, which means that the hybrid is supposed to ward off evil. The hybrid is a repellent of choice, since it constantly escapes to the nothingness, and therefore to what might cause the emptiness, that is to say the evil spirits. Among hybrids, we know, of course, the dragon and the phoenix, but I have chosen to present hybrids which, although perhaps less known to non-Chinese, have nevertheless been important to Chinese beliefs through the ages. Some of them still continue to be revered today for their supernatural power. In ancient China, bronze containers were used to hold sacrificial offerings presented during the ceremonies of worship to the heaven, to the gods and to the ancestors. And um, people attached great importance to the decoration of these vases as they thought it made them powerful enough to protect the person conducting the worship against negative forces. And they also thought that this decoration will facilitate the communication with the heaven and with the spirits. Some of these ritualistic vases are decorated with zoomorphic forms. The principle of the animal mask worn by the shaman 
to better communicate with heaven was adopted since the Shangyin for the decoration of ritualistic vases. It comes in the form of Taotie. Sometimes this is translated as the glutton. The Taotie is formed of two animals facing each other, their eyes separated by a shape that has a function of a nose. The creature has no lower jaw, but a pair of horns and sometimes ears. The meaning of this mask has long remained a mystery. According to an ancient legend, Tautie was the son of the god Jinyun, and this good for nothing had an endless appetite for human beings. Having become so voracious, it ends up becoming un unable to digest what he devoured. One day, a human victim remained stuck in his throat. While suffocating, Tautie's body began to disappear to leave only its big avid face to remind everyone of the harmful effects of avarice, gluttony and waste. In the minds of the Chinese people, the Tautie is evidently a repellent. And as for most of hybrid, but in this particular case, it has also a symbolic apotropaic function. Another example is the pichie, an imaginary little animal. Originally, it used to protect tombs. It looks like a winged lion and it's often portrayed with a goatee. It belongs to the group of small auspicious animals called reisho, that we can translate it into English as chimeras. Its name literally means avoid harm. It disperses evil spirits. The legend tells us that the Pichie disobeyed to her heavenly law and that the Jade Emperor punished it for that by imposing a new diet on it. Henceforth, it could only eat gold and silver without having the ability to expel what it had swallowed. The Emperor himself had removed its anus. Therefore, the Pichie symbolizes money and wealth. And today, the Pichie is enthroned on the desktop of most of Chinese businessmen worthy of the name. Myself, I have a very nice little Pichie, but it's quite lazy. The Chilin is another ratio. It is equipped with the body of a deer, with the tail of an ox, it has a horn, and sometimes wings. Its name can be translated into English as unicorn. It is one of the four sacred animals, Siling. It is revered as a provider of children with great moral qualities. It is said that Confucius's mother walked into its footprints just before being pregnant of the great wise man. If a unicorn and a phoenix appeared on the roof of the palace, one can be sure that the emperor was virtuous. The unicorn legitimized the, emperor, the power of the emperor. In 1415, Amiral Zheng He, whose naval mission outside China had not met with the expected success, brought back from Bengal a giraffe at the court of the emperor Yongle from Ming dynasty. His aim was to find favor with the emperor. The, the giraffe was taken for a chilin, so it obviously delighted the emperor, since the animal is the symbol of good fortune, new successes and great wisdom. It was something like, the emperor was virtuous, we've got proof. Nowadays, contemporary art uses hybrids as a support to artistic expression and reflection. And I would like to mention the name of the artist Huang Yongping, who is interested in the place of the human beings in the social, cultural, environmental worlds. He uses hybrids representation to explore the different types of powers that run the world today. Financial power, military power, religious power. His masterpiece, called the Ocean Snake, is a snake skeleton placed on the seafront in Saint-Nazaire in France. 
Hua Yunping is examining here the issue of the protection of nature. As we have just seen, the Chinese attributed to hybrids magic and protective powers. And hybrids have accompanied humans for centuries and they will continue their missions of protecting us as the world changes. After this explanation of some very interesting features of beliefs in Japan and China, let's continue in the next video by zooming in one particular well-known system of beliefs, Buddhism. <laughs>